Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Boeing completes first test flight of autonomous passenger vehicle. Photos emerge of Russian heavy drone. And Unique expands H520 line with precise RTK satellite navigation. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI. I'm Skylar Vanell. Boeing successfully completed the first test flight of its autonomous passenger air vehicle prototype in Manassas, Virginia, and it measures 30 feet long and 28 feet wide. The prototype completed a controlled takeoff, hover, and landing. It tested its autonomous functions and ground control systems. The leader of Boeing's urban air mobility efforts, Boeing Next, used Aurora Flight Sciences for the design and development of the electric aircraft. The vehicle will continue to be tested to advance the safety and reliability of on-demand autonomous air transportation. The PAV prototype is powered by an electric propulsion system and is designed for fully autonomous flight from takeoff to landing and has a range of up to 50 miles. Boeing says future flights will test forward wingborne flight and the transition phase between vertical and forward flight modes, a phase that challenges engineers when it comes to any high-speed vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. In the next unmanned minute, We'll take a brief look at a few of the stories making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. According to the independent newspaper, the 32-hour closure of Gatwick Airport cost airlines 50 million pounds. That equals about $64 million. The newspaper based the numbers on EasyJet's announcement, saying they lost about $19 million. Over 140,000 travelers had to deal with the canceled flights and delays, but for Gatwick-based EasyJet, some 82,000 passengers were affected. There still is no proof a drone was flown nearby. A full-scale training exercise called Exercise Lightning Shield was conducted by Airborne Response. They provided aerial support for the Army National Guard and specialized elements of the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Department at the Homestead Miami Speedway. Airborne Response says by deploying a force made up of UAS and tethered aerostat systems flight teams, it was able to provide comprehensive low-altitude umbrella capable of delivering aerial intelligence throughout the simulated disaster response exercise. CAE has been awarded a contract from General Atomics Aeronautical Systems to develop a comprehensive synthetic training system for the UK's protector RG MK1 remotely piloted aircraft system program. The protector will be operated by the Royal Air Force and is the UK specific variant of GAASI's certifiable MQ9B Sky Guardian. NASA's Curiosity rover has taken its last selfie on the Vera Rubin Ridge, then it descended towards a clay region of Mount Sharp. The rover has been in this area for more than a year, gathering data for scientists. Back in December, it collected its 19th sample, and then on January 15th, the spacecraft used its Mars hand lens imager camera to take 57 photos and then stitched them together to create a Martian selfie. And that was your Unmanned Minute. Photos surfaced on the web of what is reported to be the Russian Hunter Heavy Drone prototype. Imagery began circulating on Russian social media on January 23rd, with several more showing up thereafter. They showed an aircraft that looks very much like the MQ-25 being developed for the U.S. Navy. The images were likely captured by plane spotter near the runway at the Novobrisk Aviation Plant. Back in July, TASS reported an unnamed source told them the drone would make its first flight by the end of 2018, and the drone was constructed using composite materials and treated with a stealth coating. Unique International's commercial hexacopter, the H520, will now optionally be available with an RTK system. 
Even under difficult GPS conditions, such as in cities or canyons, the RTK system ensures maximum precision and centimeter precise positioning. The fully integrated satellite navigation reportedly enables extremely accurate reoccurring images, faster 3D mapping, and makes automated inspection flights easier and more precise. By using RTK technology, the H520 can now fly much closer to objects for inspection. As the UAV positions itself precisely in the centimeter range rather than in the meter range, the satellite navigation system makes it possible to significantly reduce image overlaps, maximizing efficiency in workflows. The RTK system is not only fully integrated into the hardware, but also into the UAV software. If the use of a ground station is not possible, the system can also be operated with a national reference station network. The RTK will be available in the second quarter of 2019 in different configurations. As a complete system including the airframe and RTK module, which will run about $3,200, and as an upgrade for existing customers for around $1,700. The H520 RTK GPS ground station will be sold separately for about $2,400. And that's our program for this week. If you have a story suggestion, send us an email at news-spy at aero-news.net. Our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday. You can find all the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. For more on the innovative world of all things unmanned, head on over to auvsi.org. We will see you back next week.